This over here is a very special AIO from Be Quiet. It was just launched, it's new. It's very special, like I said, but why? Because if you're a creator, this has compatibility that 99% of the AIOs don't have in the market, which makes it very special because it's a new version. I'm wondering how good is it really when pulling a 350 watts? Huh? Shall we check it out? Licensing Windows is cheap and easy with whokeys.com and if you use the code TN20, you get an extra discount. Complete the purchase, copy the key and paste it to the activation settings. And you're all done! Also check out their Microsoft Office 19 license and use the same code TN20 for the extra discount. Check out whokeys.com in the video description below. So what's already happening is I've got my Threadripper PC. That's my personal PC setup here. If you haven't seen the video, go check it out. It's very interesting. It's got a very special AIO in there. This is the NMAX. Lick Tech 2 and right now we're running Cinebench and we're doing this for 10 minutes. Right now the CPU temperature is about 79 degrees, 78 degrees, we're pulling 350 watts. We're gonna let it run for 10 minutes and then we'll see what the average is. And then we're gonna put this one on and then see if that is gonna do it any differently. And this is where things get interesting. So firstly, I am really enjoying this new look. They've caught up with the design, what it looks like and gone a little bit further. We've got new New fans in there, I think they are the Silent Wings 4, if I'm not mistaken. So we've got our fans. It says Silent Loop 3 unit. So they're specifically made for this cooler. They feel very, very heavy, heavier than normal. They go up to 2,500 RPM. In terms of fan blade design, I don't know what design this is, but if I'm comparing it to Noctua, for example, the Noctua blades are a lot closer to the sides of the frame, but they're a lot more expensive as well. We're gonna get three of these fans. We get some literature. So it comes in 240, 360, and 420 millimeters. Interestingly, not 280 millimeters, so only 120 millimeter variants but actually 420 millimeters that is three 140s so i don't know why they don't have a 280 millimeter of this instruction manuals on be quiet are always really really good everything's very well labeled it's very very good screws for the frame fan splitter cable different brackets and mounting hardware some more here as well as thermal paste and then a very special bracket here which actually we are going to be using it also comes with extra coolant so whenever your AIO gets a bit low on liquid you can use this that's included and then fill it back up but this cooling block is a little bit different reminds me a little bit of Batman but at the same time minimal and just Cool, but then on the bottom here, this is where things get a little bit interesting. This here is a lot bigger plate than what you usually see on some of the other AIOs. So let me show you. So this here is Fantex Glacier 1 AIO. So if we look at this cooler block size in there and in here, you can see it's actually a lot bigger in terms of CPU coverage. So if we're taking a large Threadripper CPU like that, then you can see that this guy here doesn't quite cover a lot of this but then this guy here covers a lot more of the Threadripper than something else so interestingly this is kind of like a hybrid in the middle it's not entirely covering the IHS of the cooler because you can see that the Threadripper CPU IHS is still bigger than the cooler block in here but this covers all of the main components in there that the other one kind of may not cool so if you've got your CCDs in there and then an IO chip separately, this should cover all of it because this is rectangular like this as well. So in 10 minutes, we did 3,682 points and we reach 83.9 degrees on the Liquitec NMAX cooler there. But what I wanted to show you on this IHS difference is that if you've got one of these Intel CPUs that got a rectangular CPU just like that, look at that. That just covers all of it. I can put the whole CPU on it and it still covers all the rest of it, which makes this very interesting, especially for creators who are looking for alternatives to run the Threadripper platform. Because if you look at AIOs that are meant to go for Threadripper system, there aren't that many out there. And some of them don't look particularly good. Like this NMAX, mm, I'm not sure what I like about this NMAX in there just like that. So let's turn the PC off, get this installed and test how good it is. 
Now, at the same time, if you look in NMAX and Be Quiet differences, then you can see that NMAX is still a lot bigger than this Be Quiet. It's not as big. So I'm interested to see what the results are going to be. Now, the thing with NMAX mounting bracket is that this is so hard to get this off these screws. So I'm going to have to use pliers. Now, the installation for Threadripper on this Be Quiet goes very interestingly. So you take the Threadripper bracket out, which is quite obvious, it's the biggest one in there, kind of line it up with the screw holes, then just very lightly tighten it, so making sure that the screws start going and it doesn't come out. Then you're gonna take this CPU block, make sure you peel this off, very, very important. But before I peel it off, I'm actually gonna take some of this thermal paste, and then you put some over there. So if you're installing on Threadripper, everything's gonna get covered. I'm gonna spread it out as well. Then you'll take the CPU block and you're gonna have to see if it goes whichever way you wanna put tubes down or tubes up. I'm probably gonna put tubes up so that it's easier for me to test if I put the AIO on the top there, something like that. Now, one of the interesting thing is, this is actually, if I peel this off, that's not exactly in the center of the screws, or at least the block isn't the block cover. The IHS is in the center because the screws and they go in the center. This is hanging out from the bottom. So let's hope it's going to fit in there just like that. And then what we'll do is you screw in these screws first. So you kind of attach your cooler to the bracket. And then you go around and tighten the bigger bracket onto the actual motherboard. Okay, then all we have to do is plug in the ARGB, which is the five volt header, and then the CPU fan. That is gonna adjust our block temperature. It would also be recommended to use this PWM splitter for your fan cables. So I'm gonna put that on the CPU optional. I know it looks messy, but it's gonna turn on. Oh, these fans are fast. Uh, look at that. How cool does this look? This looks like Mad Max or something like that. That's absolutely amazing. I'm loving the look. Okay, here we go. We've got exactly the same thing going. And let's see this. As you can see, we're pulling 340, 350 watts here easily. 70 degrees. Now, it's going to take a little bit until this liquid warms up. But already one of the benefits of this compared to the NMAX is that these tubes, you can point and orient them, meaning these are changeable. There's a joint in there, whereas the NMAX were fixed. This is the way they come out. So inside the case like this one, it's a little bit awkward putting it like one way or the other way because they don't move as much. So you're restricted what you can do with the cooler. Right now, the fans are extremely quiet, running at very low speed. I can feel that the radiator is properly warming up. The block here is warming up, but right now it's cooling down 350 watts with 76 degrees. The fans aren't even making pretty much a difference. And I put them exactly in the same parts as my previous AIO was, which means that the RPMs are exactly the same. I'm not running the fans any faster or the pump any faster, it's exactly the same settings. And I've tuned them to be very, very quiet. Right now, those fans are quiet. I mean, they're very idle, actually. The previous cooler had the benefit of having a cooler system. So when we turned it on, it was cool, came from underneath the table, which is a little bit cooler than up here. The Be Quiet has the downside of the system's kind of already warm. The CPU's warm, the VRMs are already heated up. But the benefit is that it's got an open case, so it's not as restricted in there. So we'll see how it does. We're very close to the NMX cooler, 79 degrees right now. As you can see, the CPU is kind of now peaked. It's gone down 1.5 degrees from 79. So it's fully saturated. The liquid inside there is the temperature it's going to be now, I'm guessing, and it's going to stay roughly around 79 degrees. Also, these Be Quiet fans right now are blowing a little bit hot air in because all the hot air that from the VRMs, for example, in here, come to the top in here and it pushes it through there. 
whereas the other cooler had nice cool air in from the other side so perhaps not entirely fair 50 seconds to go as you can see our temperature is slightly higher 81.8 if i'm not mistaken oh no 83.9 so we are a lot lower let's see if we actually finish with higher points as well nine seconds to go by the way this is a threadripper 7970x 32 core 64 thread that pulls 350 watts we can get a little bit more out of it let me show you 3687 so in terms of points we didn't get much difference it was a little bit higher but the temperatures where things are a lot different 83.9 this was 81.8 so we're about two degrees lower and i would say that this is a disadvantage because the room is hotter we've pumped more air in hot air goes directly up rather than cold air in from the other side so i think we're doing pretty well right now this was the fans basic Basically just idling it's not breaking a sweat at all the temperatures are not even rising that much we need more power now I wish on AMD we could do it a little bit more simpler but we're gonna have to go to the BIOS how can we go to advanced mode tweaker RAM is on uh, there we go position boost overdrive enhancement leave this disabled and I think it's advanced CPU settings and we're gonna go to position boost overdrive and we're gonna go to enabled let's see what happens now save and exit now then what we can see here is let's do exactly the same 10 minutes and i'm gonna press go let's see the power draw now as you can see 391 375 388 this time i'm gonna get the cpu fans to have a little bit of more aggressive curve on so now the fans are going more aggressively and look at that cpu temperature no we're pulling 400 watts 412 as you can see because we're cooling it down the actual actual package power draw is more 412 watts guys over 400 watts no problem now i'm gonna let it run for 10 minutes so let's see if it does it any lower or any higher now since this case is not very good for the vrm calling i'm gonna add a little fan as well here to help with the vrms i want to see if that helps this to boost even higher so look at that we've got 11 seconds left we're pulling about 400 watts 393 our temperatures are 84 85 degrees the maximum has been 87.6 so about one two degrees higher than what we're currently running so this fan seems to actually make a little bit of a difference because these vrms really are hot to the touch but this is cooling them down so well they were absolutely unbearable before but now they're all right now we pull extra 50 60 watts i mean that's the power of a whole cpu sometimes and right now this is completely fine now as you can see it's not necessarily every single boost that will pull as much wattage as possible because if we go to fermark for example and there is a cpu burner on this test as well then you can see that we're not not necessarily pulling as much power so all 64 threads take a look at this look at that we're going to 90.9 degrees but let's see the power draw package power draw Woo! 444 watts now that's what i'm talking about we're still not thermally throttling though but it's very hot almost extra 100 watts do you understand we're pulling 440 watts so that's usually like two or three cpu power systems and look at that no problem really because if you look at this part here thermal throttling it's a no i just want to say the pump is extremely quiet this is insane looks like cinebench couldn't quite actually give it enough things to do because this cpu burner pulls more watts usually i've seen it the other way that fermark pulls less but higher temperatures so conclusion about this be quiet cooler am i happy i'm super happy here's a couple of the reasons why i think this is amazing number one the design has improved i wasn't a big fan of the silent loop 2 it just didn't quite work this one has a lot of benefits apart from the design the design is so much better i like that the fans have been improved the fans are nice and black and they just are really really good if you want to run them loud and get a lot of performance you can but you don't have to as you can see we can pull 350 watts it sounds like normal but we can pull 350 plus watts and the fans are doing an absolutely amazing job secondly we've got an improvement of a cpu block which means that now we can use the silent loop 3 on threadripper system 
systems as well. So if you're running a threader per system and you're looking for a really nice loop that looks good and actually performs good, this is an amazing, in fact, one of the best options that you can go for. Thirdly, what makes this better than the NMX, for example, is that these tubes have a joint in there, which means you can angle them any way you like. The tubes aren't as thick as on the NMX, but the performance is better and the ARGB looks really, really nice. The only downside that I can think about this cooler is the Be Quiet logo. Now, I wish that you could somehow take this off and orient this the other way, but I guess it is what it is. Be Quiet sideways. But finally, one of the nicest things about this is this also comes now 420 millimeters, which means if you're running one of the big ProArt PA602 cases or an actual big Threadripper system, you could have this big radiator that has even better cooling, quieter cooling because the fans hang and go a lot quieter. It is amazing. If you want to check out the different versions, I'm going to leave them linked in the description below. Go check it out. I am super happy. Let me know what you think. I hope the numbers speak for themselves. They really have nailed it with this one. It's amazing. Go check it out in the links below. Thank you.